Hello everyone and welcome back. Today's build is looking at a long forgotten exotic that many of you here will have never thought about trying ever again, and I'm talking about the Mask of the Quiet One. This build I've come up with will allow you to dominate content using the following exotic effects to get your abilities back up fast, get a 70 HP back when you reach critical health, the 17% void damage buff via surge mods, and a constant overshield which will play into your grenade cooldown rate. Not many people talk about Master the Quiet Ones as there are many better options available that does its effects better. However, with Roy 3.0 and the new Repulsive Brace Park, I've come across an effective setup that will lean into Mask of the Quiet Ones effect and allow you to abuse the overshield effects for pretty much free ability energy. You may think this is a dumb build, but honestly, if you are a solo player who want to give this exotic a try but don't know how to, then let me show you what I'm capable of showing. To start, you're going to want to have Control Demolition, where hitting a target with Void Abilities or Volatile Explosion makes them volatile. Further hits will cause them to explode and grant health back. Then you want Offensive Bulwark, where upon having an Overshield, your grenades charge faster, you have increased mini range of damage, and mini final blows extend the duration of Overshields. So to make the Master of Quiet One effective, we have to understand its base effects. Basically, each time you get damage, it will reduce your ability cooldown by flat 5% for all abilities, with a 1 second cooldown between activations. A 5% isn't a lot, nor is it noticeable. However, over a given period of time, it can actually work in your favour when combined with ability boosting effects. Prime example being using a weapon with Repulsive Brace to create an overshield and debuff kills, and then combine that with our two aspects in hand. This will allow us to get our grenades back fast via overshields, but also from being hit by targets that will speed this up within the 10 seconds we have. This however isn't enough as we need to factor in fragments as well. Echo Cessation, finisher final blows create a burst of void damage that causes targets nearby to become volatile, Echo Reprisal, a final blows when surrounded by batons grant super energy, Echo Provision, damaging targets with grenade grant melee energy, and Echo of Undermining, Void Grenades apply a 15% debuff on targets. Out of the fragments chosen, Echo of Cessation and Undermining are the priority fragments to have as they will be applying a debuff that will work alongside our aspects and the Repulsive Brace Park. We also have this seasonal mod Volatile Flow active, which will allow our Void Weapons to be volatile upon auto power collection. Simply, we want to maximise how much often we can trigger a debuff as this will play back into one of our abilities and this ability upon use will then affect our other abilities, etc. The coordination here will always make sure your abilities benefit from each other no matter how much you're getting back, and it honestly works out really well. For the mods and stats section, we have both our resilience and discipline stat at a tier 7 to 10 range for the best results of the build. Although having a tier 10 resilience seems redundant and wholly against Mask of the Quiet One's effects, do you remember that we don't need to reach critical health to trigger both its effects? Getting damage will grant us ability energy back, and having high resilience and recovery stat will allow us to maintain a nice flow of energy back by keeping our stats high. On top of that, things like our Rally Barricade, which is tied down to our Outreach mod times 2, will allow us to spam our melee more often, which in turn will trigger melee kickstart and impact induction mods. So, what you're seeing currently is that our subclasses focus on grenade cooldown rate, while our mods focus on the melee cooldown rate, and with the two combined, you'll get a yin yang setup that works out really well with master quiet ones. This also means that you can leave your strength stat very low and not worry so much about its usage since we already have the dedicated items in place to sustain it. Your discipline should be a high tier if possible, but it doesn't need to be a tier 10. As our subclass and exotic will cover the regen of our grenades, this will leave you free reign to pick whatever mod you think best should support it. Innovation and Ashes to Ashes are a good pairing to have if you can create plenty of orbs to support them. Having two charged up mods with Firepower and Void Siphon for creating orbs of power will hugely support the already flexible grenade region we have in mind. It's very effective once you play around with it as the cooldown provided means that you don't need to spec into having grenade kicks on mod, which is a common for heavy grenade based builds. Lastly, I would then advise you to add on the Void Surge mod times 2 so that our Void Weapons can always have a 17% damage buff when collecting Orbs of Power just to trigger them. Although low, our Armor Charges slot and time limit allows us to do some very heavy DPS against anyone 
and anything we face with a weapon. On top of that, we then have the 15% from Undermining Fragment on top of the damage applied. So, with a Heavy Void weapon of your choice, you can make this build viable for endgame if everything goes to plan. Now, lastly, the weapons being used will of course be a weapon that has the Repulsor Brace Park on it. Ideally, it has to be a primary weapon that can get it so we can park it more often, but a Void Heavy that you can get is also fine if you can replace it. I have the Hero's Burden SMG with the perk, which can only be gotten from Iron Banner, but the grind for it is definitely worth it. As an adaptive frame, it's reliable and sturdy enough to be brought into endgame if you wish, and its base stats support the weapon pretty well for players to use non-stop. The Repulsive Blaze perk will help make Master Quiet Ones as effective as possible once our overshields are active, as this here will allow us to activate our target trait more often as we like. As long as you get a weapon that has the following perk available, then that's all there is to it for the build. I would however say that if you really want to be consistent with how the build triggers its effects, you may want to add on the new Dermatistic Chaos Machine Gun. This is something can apply both volatile and weaken debuff on the target as long as you keep your finger down on the trigger. It is a high impact frame which means that it won't really work that well against minor to major combatants. But against ultra mini bosses, this can work within your favour if apply the debuff and then switch to a weapon that the repulsive brace perk can activate on. This can act as a backup if your abilities are completely spent and you need to find a way to build up ability energy fast. So I never thought that the day would come so that Mask of the Quiet Ones would be viable as a build in Destiny at the moment. This exotic has never really shined in the game because of its exotic effect being weak and non-noticeable while in combat. When compared to Heart of Image Light for example, Heart provides users with a much faster cooldown rate and a damage buff towards your melee and grenade, which when combined with a high tier stat and flexible fragments, it kind of blows Mask of the Quiet Ones out of the water with. Even now, after this nerf, the exotic can still beat Mask of the Quiet Ones in terms of cooldown rate. But what makes Mask viable to some is the fact that passively it's always going to be giving you a 5% ability regen when you get hit in combat. This is low of course, but the amount of time you're in action and getting hit does add up to a reasonable cooldown rate provided to you. That's why if you want to make the exotic work in your favour, you want to combine it with a build that focuses on a high resilience build with a favour of overshields. The idea is that if we can trigger a constant overshield and get the benefits of offensive bulwark active, we can combine the high survivability of the build to give us a grenade and ability energy faster. In many ways, by us overprotecting ourselves, we can in action get ability energy back faster just from playing normally. This sort of build is useful for solo players who tend to play aggressive for their kills, but also its effects in the endgame actually makes it viable since it hits hard and is quite tanky to use. I do not see a lot of players making the switch over from Half in Most Light to this anytime soon, as the benefits that Heart offers to players is too good to miss out. However, I do see these also making a return for newer players who don't want to do anything in depth wise for the builds and high maintenance to use, but rather a simple setup that haunts the player's hand as a reward for playing aggressive or passive. Nonetheless, it's definitely a fun build to play around with, but what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have players available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.